My name is Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. My name is Billie Eilish. This is getting out of hand. I am Billie Eilish. I'm doing this shit till I'm 90. So, get ready for it. Uh, I think it's October 18th, 2017. It's October 18th, 2018. October 18th, 2019. October 18th, 2020. I'm 15. I'm 16. I'm 17. I'm 18. I have 257,000. I have 6.3 million. 40.7 million. 67.5 million. Where are these people coming from? Like, that's my question. The most followed person that follows me is Chloe Grace Moretz. Katy Perry, maybe. Justin Bieber. Ariana Grande. My baby. With 204 million followers. It's a picture of me and Charlie XCX. Isn't it the one about me smiling? 10 million? That's a lot. Five Grammys. Won five Grammys. <laughs> wow, I will be 18. I never thought I'd be 18. Hopefully I look fly. What is that quote? Will I have accepted the things I cannot change? And will I have changed the things that I cannot accept? It's a good thing to think about. What? What, what changes, you know? What endings, what new beginnings? <laughs> oh God, I did not age well. <sighs> Girl, please. <laughs> Talk about what's gonna change, what's gonna be different in here. <sighs> Your whole life will have gone. <laughs> but not just you, <laughs> everyone because Coronavirus. Definitely not where I thought that, that I would be currently, but I'm also not mad at it. I'm very, very lucky to have had this year play out the way it did because for a lot of people it was literal hell and I am very aware that I have been pretty blessed for, for the fortune that I've had this year, even though the year has sucked. It's still, you know, whatever. We're alive still, you know? I don't know, the thing is like, I don't really have any free time, but then I also kinda, it's weird, I contradict myself because I kinda don't really like having a day off because I get off the hustle. <laughs> I get out of the groove, you know, I get out of like my vibe. I hope whatever amount of off days I want next year, I get. Like if I want a hundred off days next year, I hope I get that. I hope I'm listened to. That's basically it. I really said a hundred days, hundred days I said. Oh, bitch, you got what you wished for. We're, you happy? <laughs> you happy? Because, <laughs> damn. This is the most amount of time off that I've had in, you know, five years now. Um, I think that goes for a lot of people, but that was even true for like the first month of quarantine. You know, we had three weeks off and I was like, wow, this is the most time off I've ever had. I can't believe it, it's so great. It's like a free vacation and it'll, we'll go right back out on tour in a week and we'll be fine. And clearly we were all wrong with that and we look like clowns now. But I will say I have made and created things that I don't think I ever would have created without this period of time. Um, this amount of time and this just life itself. I would like things to be normal though, again, I would like that. But I will say that it, I, I'm, I'm grateful for what it's given me. I really wanted to go on that world tour. We started it, got three shows in, canceled, flew back home. Um, I really wanted to get a Lamborghini. Better have a Lamborghini. <laughs> it's not that I couldn't have, I just, there were so many other things that were so much more important. There's more people to give that money to. There's way, way more, and I cannot stress it enough, way more important things going on than a fucking Lamborghini. So, the one thing I have now that I did not have a year ago is my little pooch puppy, Shark. Shark, Shark, come here. <laughs> this is Shark. My son, he is so silly. Look, oh, he's wagging his tail. This is Shark, didn't have him a year ago because he's only eight months old. All right, I'll let you go, bud. You go, bud. Um, the people that support me, my fans, which I don't like to call fans, my, you know, my family, you know. Finishing this album, 
and doing the most crazy shows I could, I'm capable of doing in the next month. Maintaining um, my happiness, which I've been experiencing for like the first time <laughs> in many years. I want to stay happy. That's a big goal for me. So cute. I love that those are all very genuine. Those were 100% what I was feeling very strongly. Um, it's so weird, like, what we take for granted. Like, I would never have thought that I wouldn't be able to do shows one day, you know? So much time spent, me dreading tour, dreading press, dreading this, dreading that, and like, I had no idea that I was dreading something that I would one day not even be legally allowed to do. Like, that's what's crazy to me. The shows are like the one thing that I feel like I've ever been good at. I know that sounds stupid, but it's like the only thing I've ever f done that made me feel like I belonged. Maybe it's cliche, I don't know. Lord, keeping my family safe and, you know, staying up. There isn't much else to do right now. Everything matters differently now than a year ago. Honestly, everything. I can't, I really can't even think of one thing. Like, all the things that I felt like mattered most a year ago matter less. All the things I felt like mattered the least a year ago matter more. Um, I learned so much more about just the way people are living that I wasn't aware of. Climate crisis and social injustices and, you know, kind of all the bad things. And I think made me think differently. It's not like I wasn't aware, I just learned more and thought about it differently and, you know, was more open to learning. And uh, it's been a crazy year. Uh, people think I'm pregnant. A lot of people thought I was pregnant for a second. That I sold my soul to Satan. There's this picture of me like running from my car to my brother's front door on like a 110 day degree day in a tank top and everyone's like, damn, Billy got fat. I'm like, nope, this is just how I look. You've just never seen it before. So that's, that's like the most current one, but whatever. <sighs> um, I don't know. I think that's, uh, that's not really for me to decide. I think, yeah. The reason people are looking up to you is because you're you. They're not looking up to you so that you'll tell them something that you would never actually tell them. They're looking up to you so that you tell them something that you would tell them yourself. So I love having kids kids relate to me and tell me that I make them feel comfortable in their bodies. Like that, if I can do anything, I wanna do that, so. It's really hard to talk about my life and have it not sound like I'm bragging. Sometimes I'll catch myself in a conversation with someone acting like I'm in an interview. And in interviews, you're trained to talk about yourself and not ask the other person about themselves. And so I'll catch myself in, art, in, in conversations where I'm like, shit, like I'm not, I'm being interviewed. I'm acting like I'm being interviewed instead of acting like I'm talking to a human being. That's such a good point. I will never stop talking about that. I'm glad that I was definitely aware of it a year ago. Um, I, I feel so much better about it now. I was so insecure about where I was, so I felt like I was always having to prove like what I did and what I do and like who I am and whatever. But something about it getting bigger and bigger makes me almost more comfortable not proving myself. For a while now, I've been really having an identity crisis a little. I think it was December. I did some like radio show performance and the entire show, I felt like I was pretending to be Billie Eilish. Like I felt I completely wasn't looking at myself as myself. I was just like totally seeing it from not my own perspective and it was <laughs> so weird. Happened multiple times at like award shows and whatever. I just felt like, I felt like a parody of myself. I've, I've felt a little bit better about it lately. It's just like you forget, like I'm, I'm literally 18. It's funny that I'm expected to have found myself and stick with it, you know? It's like, you know, I'm having, I'm trying different things out. I'm, I'm, I'm trying different ways of living and styles and personalities and, you know, hairstyles and clothing and shoes. And like, I'm just trying it all out because I'm like a growing fucking girl. I've definitely had like moments of like reaching out to a couple people, but every time I do it, I, I kind of like 
stop myself because I'm like, this is so weird. You know, I've had some conversations with Bieber about this where we just, you know, talk about the craziness of our lives and whatever. Like Ariana has been really cool about stuff. Those are some people that I feel like have really shown me support and like, you know, even like Katy Perry told me that I could reach out to her whenever and talk about it because it's crazy. And, you know, that's really important and I think it's good. Gaga has said it to me before. It's, you know, it's nice to, to hear from people that like have gone through this and know what it's like and went through the shit of it and went through the amazing parts of it. And it's like, it's nice to hear people with me. But at the same time, like, no matter like how many people are, are there for you and have gone through similar things, it's like, nothing ever happens twice. A tattoo maybe? No, no face tattoos. The only two tattoos I wanna get are the ones that barely anyone could see. I did get a tattoo. <laughs> but you won't ever see it. I did what I said I'd do, what you expect? Okay, well, I looked at my phone. That's what I did this morning when I woke up, I looked at my phone. I think I made myself a burrito for breakfast with a gluten-free tortilla. I woke up and then pooped. <laughs> That's what I did. So for, hey, it's the first thing I did, dude. You asked. I looked at my phone. That's what I did. I looked at my phone. Classic day. Face recognition, like there's no home button. What the heck? They've made monograms crazy. What the hell is a monogram? A hologram is what I meant. It's crazy that you can charge your phone by like putting it on that little disc. Robots, dog, like please. Robots doing stuff. Let's leave the robots in the lab. Don't let them come out here. Honestly, the news is so bad, I can't even. Oh yeah, Beyonce had some twins, and she still looks fly. Kehlani's pregnant. Greta Thunberg, honestly, she's been fucking kicking people's ass. Literally that Trump might lose, <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> and that's not even a guarantee. I guess a positive thing would be that a lot of people that say that they've never voted are voting for the first time. That is huge news. We have hope, at least, is what I want to say. I think that that gives us some hope. That gives us something, and maybe an opportunity to get better. I'm pretty afraid of people dying. Not me dying, but like the people around me dying. The people I love dying. Or being, you know, fatally injured, or, um, you know, some sort of brain damage, it's just something that would try and change them drastically or, yeah, that, that would really be, that's, yeah, that's probably my biggest fear is the people I love, like, dying. It's tough because that, at the time, was like kind of an irrational fear. That was kind of just like an overthinking fear and now it's actually a real thing to fear. Um, because people are losing their loved ones and now it's like actually a real possibility. So it's just about staying safe. Honestly, same for a year from now because I don't know what will have happened in a year. And that is in itself, it's terrifying. Especially with like the unknown of what next year looks like. Being Apple's up next artist. I did Ellen last week, Jimmy Fallon, so many festivals. I just sold out a headlining arena tour. Had a number one single, biggest selling album of the year. Five Grammys. One, two, three, four, five. Performed at the Oscars. Met like every celebrity that's ever existed and it was the most overwhelming, insane, surreal thing I've ever experienced. I went to the Brits, I won a Brit, it was amazing. I performed, we recorded the Bond theme song, working with Hans Zimmer and the orchestra to record it. Completely surreal and amazing. I started my World Arena tour and then, you know, the world kind of died. But before that, you know, it was quite a year. It started off very strong. Then other things happened and, you know, we went to tons of protests. We fought for people. That was a big thing this year too. Huge accomplishment, I feel like. And uh, we will never stop fighting. 
I will never stop fighting for you, Brianna. I will never stop fighting for all the black and brown people that have lost their lives to, to police brutality and literally just racism. Never gonna stop fighting for you, ever, ever, ever. I will do what I can and I stand by that. You know, I have such a huge platform, like why would I wanna waste that? Yeah, it's easier to say nothing, but it's like, that's not gonna help anything and it's not gonna, I don't know, I don't get the point of, of silence. I think it's, there's a difference between silence and processing. And I think that that is like an, a big thing that people need to understand is that you gotta think through what you're gonna say say it in the right way. I think it's really important to speak up, but also be respectful. You know, it's been a, a year of just trying to speak up for everything you believe in and fight really hard, you know? There's nothing else to do. Like, why wait until you experience it to fight for it? You know what I'm saying? Like, just fight for it already. I hope that it, we have more years of fighting and I hope that something fucking changes. Brockhampton. Tierra Whack is sick. My favorite artist is Techno. I've been loving some Arlo Parks. Honestly, Ash Nico has some, some slams. Like, I can't even lie to you. I fucking love the Strokes album that came out, the most recent one. TikTok songs are burned into my brain, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> That's what 2020 is. <laughs> some of them are good though, so, I, so I'm, you know, whatever. My family, I'm, I'm always talking to my family, always. <laughs> Every second of my life. My mom and dad still come on tour with me. Phineas still comes on tour with me. Every day. Pretty much every day. We're always together, always talking, always, you know, whatever. It's great. I love my family. I am so lucky to have my family right now. Not only with me, but like, well and alive. It's been fun. It's been good. It's been good. <laughs> you know what I'm about to say. Fruitvale Station. Station. I am single. And I'm about to turn 18 goal. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in my life, I don't feel the need to be with anyone. I don't have my eyes on anyone. I'm not in the mood. And I'm totally fine with that. Same shit. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite part of the last video. I'm in pretty much the same place. I don't have a boyfriend and I'm happy. Like I'm I'm not worried at all. I, I love it. I'm not opposed to anything. I'm not, you know, pushing anything away or forcing something. I'm just like steady and cool with it, which is great. So it's a good place. I'm, I'm still with 17 year old Billy. Fashion is like the main one. I love fashion, I always have. I wanna direct videos, I wanna have my own clothing line, I wanna have my own everything. Lots of cars. <laughs> Such a car nut. Little girl. That's super cute. Well, once again, I did it. Yeah, fashion is is still my my expression. I definitely am not as like, interested as I used to be in designing as much as I was, um, because I think I, there are more things that I like doing than, than designing and kind of like curating and stuff, but I still am like very in charge of my clothes. And I have a clothing brand, so there you go, a little bloche. I direct my own videos, Billy, I do. Yes, you got what you wanted. I used to think the industry sucked because I was miserable <laughs> and it wasn't my team's fault. It was just where I was at the time. And that's why I thought that it was that. I just feel like the industry is thought of as this like whole cult type thing. It's like this big, like I always see these fucking trolls online. Like the industry is where all the people sell their souls to the devil. Like, whoa, that's <laughs> very <laughs> taking it far. Like the fucking people in my comment section, holy shit. <laughs> So true. It, I feel the same way. Everybody's kind of like made to, to hear like the industry and go like, fuck the industry, you know. For some people it's totally true. Some people have terrible, terrible experiences. I had a couple experiences where I was like, this is some bullshit, but it's not like the industry does it. It's just the people around you. And I also have been really lucky to have the team that I have and that I have had since the beginning. And yeah, there's some weirdos, like there's some weirdos and there's some weirdo group of groups of people 
that you just kind of gotta get get away from. But it's just about knowing your people and knowing your boundaries and like who you trust and stuff. I want to learn that it's all worth it because it's tiring as heck. The shows make it worth it. The shows and the supporters. I was taking it for granted and I that makes me really mad and I don't want to be and I just was. So true. So, so true. Yes, it's worth it for sure. Absolutely worth it. Absolutely. I would not change it for anything else. I can finally say that it's worth it. But you can't just be like expecting it to be worth it. You gotta like change some stuff around, make sure you're happy, make sure you got what you need and then it will be worth it, yes. Having the approach that no one's had, trying to write something no one's written. See, that's why I'm, I'm still bad at it because that's what I was trying to do. I kind of have no idea what to expect. Like last year, I thought I knew what the, what people would like for my album and I thought I knew like what would be popular and I was so wrong. <laughs> I have gotten so much better at it. I feel so much more confident in my writing. I feel like I know myself better. I'm better at advocating um, my opinions and communicating and I think Phineas and I have just like seriously just like really gotten in the groove. We do it so fast. Like there was like a period of time, like a, m a month ago or something, I was just like, we were just texting the label like, song done, another song done, another song done. So I'm so much better at it. I'm so, I, I love it so much more. I actually really do enjoy it now. And I do feel like I'm pretty good at it now, to be honest with you. Uh, like 12, I think. Maybe like 14, actually. I think there was like 14-ish. Blank, 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 blank. Like four and a half. Right now I have 16. We've been working and I love them all. I love all of them. The first month I was incredibly uninspired. I don't know why. I think it was just very overwhelming and scary and I think after like that first period of time when, when and came and went, I got so inspired and creative and like just like made music that I don't I don't think I would have made. My brother and I like I don't think we would have even made it at all this year. Judge me, please. <laughs> I don't and then one word, fucking no. It's my style. <laughs> Billie Eilish parody is my style. My brother is my best friend. My brother is my best friend. My best friend is Phineas, but he is also my brother. We got Drew, we got Zoe, we got Laura, we got Shark, we got my family, my brother. Those is my best friends. Maybe like once a week. I might be safe if I go to Trader Joe's. I went to Trader Joe's, did not work. I also tried Costco, which I thought I'd be safe at, and that didn't work. Fuck's sake. Public? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Public? I have not been in at all um, since March 11th. There were definitely moments in this quarantine where I forgot that I'm me. I was taking Shark to like a, a dog play group with the rescue place that I got him from. You know, I was like, I didn't even think about it because we had so much nothing for so long. I didn't even think about it. I had like my full like green like right there full like you know wasn't covering anything except obviously a mask and I was like walking in and there was this car full of people and they were like and I literally like looked behind me I was like what are you looking at? <laughs> I like forgot totally forgot but it was nice it was it was really nice to see people like before COVID at all like I don't go in public anyway just because it's a complete disaster. Um yeah it's a bad idea to do, but I have Googled myself. Only just the titles, because they're, are, they're what's funny. Like, I'm not trying to see myself on like Twitter. That is a no-go. Oh my gosh. Don't want to see that, because that shit is mean. I look myself up to like laugh, but I really don't want to actually see what's being said. But it is, it is a, it's good for a, a good laugh. I don't know if I'm more confident. I just think I know what I'm doing more. Uh, I think I'm less confident, actually. 
I, I feel like I'm probably the most confident I've ever been in my life. I don't think I've ever been more confident than I am now. Yep, I, uh, totally true. That first year, I was definitely just like, not even thinking about myself, so I wasn't even thinking about confidence. We all know that that second year was <laughs> rough. <laughs> last year, yeah, I definitely was the most confident I'd ever been last year. I think, I think that's still probably the most confident. I haven't like gone down at all. I just think it pretty much like stayed right there. COVID has made me less confident in myself just because it's made me stop doing the things I was used to doing and got good at, but it's mostly stayed the same. I'm not like not confident, but I uh, definitely was really at my peak a year ago. I was really peaking. Happy, happy girl. I would tell 16 year old me to to remember who her best friends are and remember who the people that care about her the most are and not throw them away for somebody else or for something else. Oof, that hits hard. Um, knowing the situations that I was talking about. God, how do you prepare someone for this year? I think all I would say is just like, enjoy this. Don't take anything for granted. Don't ever come off stage during this year and think, ah, I didn't really like that show. I didn't really, nope. And by the way, I'm never doing that again. When shows are allowed, I'm, I, every show is gonna be the best show I've ever done. That's that. Sure, come here, come here. Give me yourself, give me your butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring in the mom. This is my mom. She is sick as a booty. I don't mind, I can stay here that long. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Hello, baby. His grandma. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you so much. I miss being on the road with her and I miss seeing her do her shows because she's so incredible. But I have loved being home with her. Don't take your parents for granted, people.